Hello, everyone. This is Tracy Anderson, Marketing Coordinator of the RISE Association. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar is called Chase Intelligence for Risk Adjustment. It is the latest in the webinar series produced by the RISE Association, of course, which are offered free of charge as a, a benefit to our members of the association. The sponsor of today's webinar is Ziox Health, featuring Andy Kumar and Austin Bostock, who I'm going to introduce here in a second. First, I do have a, a few housekeeping items to go over with you all. So as you might have noticed, um, when you join, all attendee lines will be on mute throughout the entire event, and all of your feature buttons are located on the bottom of your screen. Of course, if you want to send questions at any time, feel free to do so. Um, just type your question into the Q&A box, which is going to pop up on the left-hand side of your screen, and then click send. Um, we will be answering questions at the end of the webinar, but of course, still feel free to submit your questions at any point in time. Today's program is being recorded. Um, we will be posting this recording in our webinar library um, inside of our member portal. We'll be sending out a link for you to view the recording of the presentation and a copy of that presentation deck a few days after the webinar is complete. Um, we also do ask that you stay tuned in for the entirety of the presentation. Um, this way you can participate in our customer experience survey. It's just a quick poll that'll pop up and remain available just so you can give your feedback about our, 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 the webinar experience. All right, and now for the introduction of our speakers. Today, we are joined by Andy Kumar, Vice President of Product and Strategy for Ciox Health. Kumar is a healthcare executive with 15 years of experience partnering with payers and large health systems to build, implement, and scale value-based care products for Medicare Advantage, managed Medicaid, and commercial populations. As an experienced product strategist, Andy has a proven track record growing businesses via product development. We are also joined by Austin Bostock, Client Advisory Manager in Consulting, where he focuses on the implementation and delivery of Pareto solutions, as well as ongoing industry advisory to various healthcare clients. His combined engineering and business backgrounds allow him to bring an analytical approach to solving problems and supporting revenue management improvement activities for clients. Without further ado, I will let Andy take it from here. Awesome. Thanks, Tracy. Um, Super excited to be here while we pull up the presentation. Um, thanks for giving us an opportunity to present uh, and share some of our insight around how health plan can take a differentiated approach uh, to pre-chase and performance AI by leveraging experiential provider data. And then, and thank you all for attending. Um, hopefully this session is gonna bring you some insights that you can um, use into your day-to-day -day operation. So I'm, as kind of Tracy mentioned, I'm Andy Kumar. I lead uh, product and strategy at Ciox, and I'm joined uh, here with our guest speaker, Austin, um, who Tracy mentioned is a seasoned leader in healthcare space, uh, has worked with and consulted with numerous health plans, specifically around risk adjustment operation. Um, Austin, you wanna say a few words? Yeah, thanks, Andy. Welcome, everyone. Um, we're really excited to uh, talk through everything today and, and demonstrate some of the capabilities. I think this is a really interesting, uh, really interesting topic. And as Andy said, I've spent my career uh, helping and implementing solutions like this. So very excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks, Austin. So in terms of uh, the agenda, if you go to the next slide, we'll start off with you know, some of the challenges that are faced by health plan that, that uses traditional uh, suspect analytic solution followed by some of the market trend. Uh, we'll also highlight how our approach using the experiential provider uh, propensity data is beneficial um, along with a case study that uh, we conducted with the health plan. And we'll wrap up our presentation with uh, some program performance dashboard that is being used by you know majority of the health plan uh, customer to talk talk uh, to track their progress and and a few takeaways. Uh, so before we get started, a little bit about Ciox. Um, so as uh, a lot of you know, Ciox is a market a leader in health information exchange for both uh, payers and provider. 
uh, serving over 50 health plans, um, including nine out of the top 10 health plan, uh, number one market share from a chart retrieval standpoint. Uh, we do over 20 million uh, record retrieval. We have touch uh, point for 650 a uh, thousand uh, providers um, plus uh, we have we manage close to about 50 million uh, record uh, three out of the five u.s hospital is uh, using our him experts uh, we do uh, anywhere close to about four million uh, uh, charts that we code with the accuracy of 98 percent or higher and deep experience in uh, nlp and other ai uh, technology that is out there so, you know, Ciox Health, uh, you know, has built one of the nation's largest health data exchange uh, with the vision of enabling ubiquitous access of health information. So Ciox platform is able to deliver uh, clinical data from multiple uh, data sources, be it via hospital, practices, pharmacy, uh, to support our requester uh, use case, and that can range, range from risk adjustment, uh, quality, uh, continuity of care, disease management, uh, population health, and, and so on and so forth. But uh, overall, SIAX has been in the market uh, for a good amount of time, and, and our experience in this uh, risk adjustment uh, market is uh, one, of, uh, one of the top and exceptional experience. So, so let's get into it. Um, in terms of, you know, the challenges uh, and, and some of the market trend uh, that I see in the market, we, we surveyed multiple health plans um, around you know, their current capability around analytics, suspect, uh, chase analytic. And what we, what we see in the market, the most common challenges that they face um, is essentially you know, the, the majority of analytics uh, solution uh, that they are using um, are outdated, right? It's, 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 it's really old. Um, uh, there's significant number of missed and inaccurate codes. Um, older model focus, you know, typically the old analytic model only focuses more on the retrospective piece. Um, and not necessarily uh, capturing uh, potential conditions um, based on the medical record. So um, if you go to the next slide, you know, some other challenges that is kind of faced is around uh, reporting, dashboard, uh, especially for leadership and actual actuaries if they want to track their retrospective and prospective program. Um, is not there. It's either manual in nature, it's hard to get, it's not real time, um, which, which causes a lot of pain in terms of tracking their progress. Also, what we have seen in the market is a lot of the, the vendors in the markets are not using provider data, which is critical uh, to uh, developing a good uh, chase list um, uh, that has a good propensity of actually retrieving the data. And overall, the whole process of you know, identifying the, the chase list, prioritizing the member is really time consuming, inefficient and error prone. So based on this, uh, you know, the, the market trend that we are, where we are seeing um, based on these challenges, if you go to the next slide, um, we're seeing a lot of health plan uh, you know, kind of moving inwards where, where they are kind of centralizing their analytic solution and taking back those vended operations. So, cause, cause the, the, the solution that we, they are working with is black box in nature. Um, the other trend that I see in the market is, uh, you know, CMS is increasing the audit and scrutiny on health plan on, on all the regulated markets. So that's, that's another concern that, uh, that, that a health plan have. Um, analytic solution in this space plays an important role uh, for the health plan because uh, you know they are using these solutions, these AI solutions, to increase their membership, uh, to reduce their operational waste, and and ultimately uh, do a better job in terms of their their bid. Um, and the solutions that the health plan are looking for in the market is not just prescript prescriptive but also um, uh, predictive uh, and, and, um, and uh, you know, we have to make sure that a solution that is offered to the health plan meets their needs. So based on these, these, these market trend, I have a quick uh, poll for the, for the group. 
um, that we will be launching and then uh, we'll move forward with our presentation. So the poll question is, you know, what type of chase um, suspect analytic solution do you currently use? Okay, looks like we still have uh, quite a few people answering, so I'm gonna give it about 10 more seconds. Sounds good. All right. Awesome, so I have the poll results, so uh, what I see in front of me is majority of, of the attendees on this webinar is uh, using internal uh, Chase Suspect Analytics, about 53%. 19% uh, of the folks are using a third-party vendor. 3% of the folks are not using any. 6% um, is using through their current retrieval vendor and 19% are, are not sure, which is which is common in the market. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that a lot of people are using their own um, internal analytics. So, so let's get into it. So keeping these, you know, challenges and market trends in mind, it's really important to invest in an AI solution that meets the health plan lead, need in the most effective way and that's outcome driven. So if you go to the next slide, uh, here's a closer look at the different components of an advanced AI solution that can make a difference. So if, if you look on the left-hand side, these are the different inputs uh, and any, any um, uh, analytic solution that will take. Um, you know, if you look at the traditional vendor, uh, you'll find that they are only taking claims data, they might be taking member eligibility data, uh, but not uh, taking into account provider data, the, pro the provider site propensity data, the clinical information, which is you know, critical in terms of running a full scale um, uh, AI analytics solution, uh, because you know, this is what is gonna give you some of the prospective um, condition if you take the clinical data and also will give you uh, an understanding of when you're creating a chase list, wh what are the locations you need to reach out to so you can actually retrieve the medical record. Um, and then from an output standpoint, if you look at you know, our traditional analytics, what I've seen in the past is they'll provide you with a, a chase file that is prioritized based on value uh, with no predictability of actually retrieving those shards. Uh, they, the, the other thing that I find is they offer retro and retrospective dashboards, Excel report, which is hard to uh, comprehend and it's not, uh, uh, not actionable. So, you know, if you look into an advanced solution, you'll find that, you know, from an input standpoint, they're taking more data, provider data, and then from an out, output standpoint, um, the data that is being supplied is a chase file that has the provider information in there. Uh, you know the propensity of um, the provider site, and you know that this chase list is more predictable because you already know that these are the sites that have responded, and then you'll, you'll be able to uh, retrieve the data. Also, in, a, in an advanced AI solution, you'll find that uh, there are dashboards that are available, which Austin is gonna cover later in the presentation, that you can track progress of your retrieval campaign in real time and, and, and that, that essentially helps you meet your operational and financial goals. Because unless you have some you know, real time or near real time input, you don't know what are the next steps you need to take in order to chase the right members and how you can close those gaps. So, it, you know, one of the critical thing, as I kind of mentioned in this whole AI solution is, 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 the, is the provider data. Uh, provider data to me is a critical component in any type of advanced AI solution. So if you go to the next slide, um, I wanna double click on that uh, provider data and why it's really important, uh, especially the, the propensity data. You know, there's multiple ways you can use that propensity data. 
um, you know, one of the ways you can do is uh, you can take a look at your current chase list and, and identify, quickly identify based on the provider site propensity data, what are the sites you have a better um, uh, probability of retrieving the medical record and what are the sites you don't have, you know, you don't have the good probability. So you can swap those, um, those either members or providers to actually retrieve the data that reduces your uh, medical and retrieval cost. Another way to kind of um, use the uh, historical data is you, you know, you can um, look at the campaign and if you are replacing provider that are responding faster or their modality of retrieval is electronic, um, you can actually reduce your entire campaign length to uh, retrieve those medical re re records, so which is also an important piece. Um, you can also look at the provider data and see the quality of charge uh, that they, have, they are providing and uh, strategically target uh, providers that you know gives a better quality medical record um, and 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 can give you the medical record faster, which essentially increases the provider satisfaction. And the big issue in the market right now is provider abrasion, and also reduces the provider abrasion, which is key. Um, you can also use this information to you know if if you know that certain site don't provide you quality data, or the data is always corrupt. You can, you can flag those for provider sites and actually go through a whole QA process because to in, ensure that the, the charge that you're retrieving is of a higher quality. Uh, and then ultimately, um, you know, digital access is the king, right? So you want to target um, sites that you can get data directly electronically through the EMR access because A, it's going to increase your retrieval yield. Uh, reduce the provider abrasion, and and uh, you know you can get the get the chart faster. So th those are the the different ways that um, we have seen um, health plan use the provider site propensity data, and and, and it helps them uh, to uh, produce a better uh, chase list and and a more productive chase list. Um, so. I want to share a quick case study with the group um, of you know how important this provider data is. So we did uh, um, you know a, a case study with a health plan that we work closely with, um, and they have about forty eight thousand members. And the purpose of the study was, hey, let's take your historical uh, chase list that you were using without the provider propensity data, and let's add the provider data in there and let's see the difference, right? So the, the results were amazing. Uh, so in an example, on the left-hand side of the chart, uh, you're seeing that you know, this was the chase list. Um, you, know, you can see about 12% of the charts were, they were not able to retrieve. Uh, you know, and 1% um, uh, you know, of the charts had about 25% propensity. Uh, and they, they, they got a mixed bag and, and, and the remaining charts they were able to retrieve. So what we did is we took their entire membership and applied the provider propensity data and replaced a member with lower propensity of getting the data with members with higher propensity of getting data. Uh, and also in some, some instant instances, instead of removing the member, we change the provider location where they can actually retrieve the data. And, and the results were amazing. So, you know, we essentially replaced about 8% of their uh, chase list with a better targeted membership, better provider uh, membership, and uh, the results was an increment of about 8% revenue uplift, uh, which, is, which is amazing by just targeting the right provider site and, and the right members. So that's, that's the reason why you know, we have to ensure that provider data is key in any part of your um, you know, chase intelligence, chase AI uh, to, to help you target the right members and the right providers. Uh, with that, we have a quick poll um, for, the, for the group. Uh, all right, so the poll is, which of the following data does your plan use um, uh, currently when you generate a chase list? Is it provider data, historical member data, both, none?
All right, everyone, I'm going to give everyone 10 more seconds. Awesome. So the results are in. I see about 12% of folks saying they, they use provider data, 21% historical member data, uh, about 60% uh, both, and about 9% none, which is uh, you know, what I kind of anticipated. Um, I, I see that the provider data is, is only about 12%. Um, and um, you know, historical data is 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 being used majority of the time, uh, which again, as as I kind of mentioned, uh, using using the provider data is is key to a successful um, a chase list. Um, if you go to the next slide, one of the other things I want to cover is you know getting a state of the art AI analytics solution is great to have. Um, but at the same time, it's also important to understand how you are using these AI solution in your day-to-day -day operation. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of explain how health plan are traditionally using it. And then I'm going to make some recommendation of what we have seen, um, the use of analytics and digital retrieval that has been really successful in the market. So a classic or a traditional approach is beginning of the season, you run a suspect analytic um, um, uh, solution and you basically take, take into consideration the historical information on the member by using the claim information. You look at the current uh, membership and see where they reside and then identify the gap and then create a chase list and send it to uh, a chart retrieval vendor that is essentially going out and retrieving those charts. So that's the traditional way of, of uh, running these analytics and running these um, running these chase lists. And then throughout the process, as and when you are closer to the submission date, you run another set of analytics to see how close you are. Can you chase more members? And then you have another submission that happens towards the towards the end of the season. So that's the traditional way of doing. Uh, the, the way that you know, PsyOx recommends uh, running these end-to-end um, -end operation is pretty unique. Um, our recommendation involves digital retrieval. Our recommendation involves running analytics multiple times of the year. And our recommendation also involves doing a second level review. So let me walk you through, uh, you know, what our recommendation is, and then one of the one of the best part is uh, with CMS kind of extending the timeline. Now you have more time to review your charts and make sure you are optimizing your charts to the best of its ability. So our recommendation is the first step in the beginning of the season is to take your entire population and understand what are the providers this these 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 population is associated to. And then you can get the provider propensity data and understand what are the location that is connected to an EHR electronically. And those are the ones that you want to target first. So instead of targeting a set of members, you can target your entire population, create a digital chase list for all the connection that you have electronic and retrieve it up front in the beginning of the season. There, there are multiple benefits of this because if you are able to retrieve these charts electronically, it gives you an ability to close gaps quicker. It gives you an ability to get a more richer data set on the members that might not have been prioritized in your traditional chase list and uh, kind of helps you submit that information upfront in the beginning of the year because you already have the data. Electronic retrieval don't take more than a week, two weeks to get, get, get back. So that's the beauty of doing electronic retrieval upfront, which we refer to as uh, digital first. Once you have completed your digital retrieval, you should look at all the members that you don't, uh, you're not connected with an EHR, and then run the traditional analytics where you identify and prioritize the members that you'll give to a retrieval vendor so they can use a traditional method to retrieve the charts. And that's what you see. You're seeing in the in the in the middle of the of the of the image. 
So you go through the process and then right before the submission, you run another set of analytics to see where your membership is and how many of them you're able to retrieve. And, not, and then once, once you create another list, you, you also now have the opportunity because you have uh, the luxury of time uh, to run second level reviews. So a lot of health plans, what they do is the high value members, they will create another chase list uh, so they can actually uh, work with their coding vendors to actually do a second level review on those members. And then, you know, keep doing analytics uh, and, and, and looking at your dashboard, which Austin is going to kind of explain in detail of how, how health plans are looking at these dashboard, looking at these progress and closing those gaps so they can optimize their entire uh, membership for the best value. So that's our approach, um, you know, a combination of digital first, combination of high value, uh, uh, you know, PsyOps chase intelligence uh, with the provider data, and then uh, um, using second level review to complete your end-to-end -end risk adjustment operation. So with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Austin to kind of walk us through, you know, some of uh, the, the dashboards that are being used by our customers uh, to kind of track their progress and make sure they are they're getting the best value. So Austin, over to you. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, so we're going to walk through um, a series of, of screenshots of, of dashboards, but the whole idea is the end-to-end -end management of a risk adjustment uh, shop, you know, knowing the different risk scores, knowing your different patient populations, where are your open gaps, uh, managing those campaigns and then ultimately submit, getting that data submitted. So um, moving to the, <clears throat> the next slide, when you're managing a risk adjustment, uh, all of your operations, it's important to have a full 360 degree view of your population to properly inform those retrospective and prospective campaigns. For example, in the MA market, we look at four distinct key risk scores to know and to monitor over time the payment RAF, so what's in the MMR for the member, the reported RAF, what sits at CMS and is accepted to date, the captured RAF, what's within your four walls, whether it's uh, charts or EMR data or natural claims utilization, and then your target RAF, what's suspected, what's not yet captured. Um, the differences between these drive different uh, different solutions. So the difference between your payment and what sits in CMS, that you can book that, that's your accrued value to date. Um, the difference between your reported and captured RAF, this is operational, uh, getting it submitted to the government. Uh, finally, your target RAF and your captured, this is the go get this, this is the chase, this is what Andy was talking about. What's suspected, what's not yet recaptured out there for your members. Moving to the next slide, within those four RAFs, it's important to know where you are and where you're going and where you came from. Um, we get the, yeah, there we go, next slide. So on the screen now is uh, an example of a 25 month graph buildup or risk score buildup. And so uh, looks like we've got a little lag on my end. If we could go back one slide um, with the, the line graph. The 25 month graph buildup is an example of, um, you know, how you monitor risk scores month over month, year over year putting the risk in your data through multi-model scoring to accurately compare those, those risk scores year over year, agnostic of model differences or changes in the models. Um, this gives you clear insight into your month over month changes and um, measure to see if we're on track or at least trending in the right direction to compare those. Um, you can, we look at this across all four of those risk scores, your payment, your capture, your target RAFs. Um, to, to know, to make sure from, you know, again, that 360 degree view, are we trending in the right direc direction compared to years past and the, the, uh, the campaigns that we've done over time? As we, uh, next slide, as we start to talk about the different campaigns and your performance evaluation, it's important to understand the risk score and financial contribution for all of these activities, uh, whether it's natural claims utilization, first and second level chart reviews, annual wellness visits, all of these contribute positively to not only risk, but also financial performance. 
but also no conditions can be captured through multiple campaigns. You may capture a condition in claims and also have it in first and second level chart reviews. You may also get it during an annual wellness visit. Knowing how all of these activities interact with each other is important for campaign management and making strategies adjustments, not only in year and in campaign, but across years as you uh, think about future campaigns as well. Next slide. Um, here we're gonna start to see, you know, now that we've kicked off a campaign, um, we're looking at in-flight within that campaign, what are we trying to do to improve those outcomes? We've seen an example that um, of, of code capture uh, and financial outcome reporting at the HCC or member or provider group level. Um, tracking this data in, at an individual member and condition level allows the comparison uh, from projected to the estimated revenue in real time and making adjustments for those potential second sweeps as, as Andy went through those. With the CMS extension of the MA deadlines, there's, um, there's additional opportunities to go in and make in-campaign performance tweaks. So looking at it, uh, coming at it from a member and a condition view may give you a good sense of where things need to be tweaked. On the next slide, we can also look at it from a uh, provider lens. So campaigns can also be drilled down and broken into pro provider performance analytics. Uh, we're talking retrieval amounts, what's the yield on those, those charts retrieved, uh, how many deletes are being submitted, um, what's the recapture rate of targeted or non-targeted conditions. Um, the, the drill downs uh, continue to go on, but the ability to filter by provider group or network within and across multiple campaigns um, assists not only in the condition recapture and campaign performance analytics, but also in your provider education efforts, knowing which providers are picking up more conditions in chart reviews rather than the original claim, which providers have a lot of attributed patients but are not doing the code capture, the code capture is happening at a different provider group. Questions like that, again, help you um, drag insights out of a campaign, but also allow you to apply that to your provider education efforts. After our campaign is done, we can do more analytics. We can drill down into what, were this, what was the actual financial contribution. At a year over year level, are we seeing the same, same contributions from these same campaigns or is one starting to become a, a clear front runner or, or do we need to make adjustments to other campaigns? Our annual wellness visit analytics and gap closure coding accuracy up to the expectations, or do we need to make adjustments? Did we target a specific uh, set of cohort or a cohort of members that performed above or, or below what we were expecting. Again, being able to filter on, uh, on after your campaign is complete across members, provider groups, different condition cohorts, all this is important to make those, those adjustments year over year. Lastly, and of equal importance, is keeping a pulse on your submission process and the acceptance of this data. A lot of hard work goes into chart reviews and the campaigns and setting up provider education. That's all well and good up until not getting it accepted to the, by the government. So making sure that all this hard work doesn't go to waste. Uh, this data integrity solution analyzes uh, the end-to-end -end process. So once you have a condition or a chart captured within your four walls, how well are, how well are your processes set up to completely and accurately get that data submitted to CMS? through your different processes. Our data integrity solution has analyzed over uh, Medicare Advantage, the Affordable Care Act market, Medicaid, and we find that over 60% of the lost risk happens before the submission process, not during or not getting accepted, um, such as an MAO2 or 04 error or an EDGE error. Um, it happens where data is not even making it into the submission process. What this solution does is it quantifies, you know, after doing all the campaign analytics and, and uh, your risk score analytics, it's quantifying the potential exposure that you had for lost risk and prioritizing those opportunities for remediation efforts. Again, we went through uh, knowing your four, your four risk scores, uh, managing that full campaign, targeting for those charts uh, in different campaigns, analyzing during, in flight and after, uh, and then finally getting it to uh, getting it to sub and submitted to the to CMS, uh, all of which are important, um, a full 360 view of the data. Uh, Andy, pass it back to you. 
Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Austin. And uh, thanks for going through some of the performance dashboard that is being uh, used by majority of the health plan to kind of track their progress, campaign progress, and, and ultimately achieve the value that they're looking for. So if you, the, I'll leave it with this, you know, in terms, when you think about any type of suspect chased uh, uh, intelligence uh, solution, um, always think about certain key factors. Are, is this an advanced analytic solution that takes into account provider propensity data? Uh, is this solution real time? Is this solution tracks your progress and gives you insight? It's not just a, a prescriptive and it's, it's more predictive. Uh, does this solution uh, help you with your retrospective as well as a prospective uh, chases? So those are the key factors that you have to look keep in mind when selecting a solution uh, for any type of uh, chase intelligence, any type of suspect analytics uh, would be my uh, key takeaways. With that, I'll open up the floor for questions. All right. Um, so to get us started off, if a member has charts at multiple providers, um, does the chase list auto select which site to retrieve from? Yes, it does uh, auto select which site to retrieve from based on the propensity data that is available to us, but we do give um, health plan the opportunity to customize that. So we'll provide all the information if the health plan uh, wants to make a manual adjustment saying, no, I don't want the auto-selected provider. I want a different provider. They will have the opportunity to do that. Okay. And how long does it take to run a pre-chase member assessment? Uh, typically, uh, it takes anywhere between uh, two to four weeks. Uh, once we get all the input data that I was kind of describing earlier, it goes through our intelligence, AI intelligence model, and then we generate a chase list. So it, it can take anywhere between two to four weeks. Okay. Um, and RAF score trend, how are new members analyzed? New members are uh, cohort, you know, one of the cohorts that we identify. So we can we can filter to just those new members. Um, they are uh, tracked with their actual claims and submission data in the Medicare Advantage market. We have the MAO. MAO4s, the MORs as well, that tell you what conditions those members are coming over with. Uh, and then we also have some uh, data science predictive analytics that take your new, uh, your new members, new to plan members, and stratify them into high, uh, medium, or low cost and high, medium, or low risk populations as well. And then we track those as a additional campaign throughout the year. Okay. Um, this person works for a small MA health plan doing risk adjustment. Um, how can they manually manually tweak their internal chase list, which is essentially just claims data for more than just res retrospective review? So is the question they want to do prospective or the question can can uh, we supply the provider data so they can manually tweak? So if the question is, can we supply provider data? Yes. So as long as we understand which providers you're targeting, we can supply you um, with some of the provider attributes, like when was the last time uh, you know, we retrieved data from a provider? What is the modality that uh, we retrieve the data? Um, you know, how often we are communicating with the provider, if there's any kind of uh, provider copy fee that is associated with it, we can supply those kind of information. So it could be manually tweaked if they, if they like. Okay. Um, and can data be retrieved for new plan members or just existing members? So the provider data can be retrieved for both uh, new and existing members. The new members has to be part of the health plan and we have to have appropriate uh, you know, consent in place. And as long as that is available, you will know, you know uh, for the new members, you know, what's the association to the providers and uh, what's the propensity uh, available. Okay, so I do have a question about um, presentation and excuse me, the presentation deck as well as the, the recording of today's webinar. So yes, we are going to be keeping a copy of that in our member portal. Um, and we'll also send out an email to everyone letting them know when that's up for everyone to view. Um, so just keep a lookout for that within the next couple of business days. Um, Another question, 
Typically, the term prospective when used in risk adjustment refers to motivating a member to have a health exam to capture open coding gaps. When you reference prospective in the context of chart reviews, can you elaborate on what you define as perspective? Austin, you want to take that one or? Yeah, it, it, if we're referencing the slides today, we, we were, um, Christina, mainly focused on the, the definition that you provided. We, you know, while Andy's analytics uh, that he walked through was chart review focused and using that provider data. Um, when we look at a 360 degree view of, of managing a risk adjustment shop, um, definitely agree with you. The prospective uh, is forward looking, trying to not only limiting to getting a, a member to have a health exam, but also engaging the member provider education, um, anything that can impact the point of care uh, and get that code capture and those, those quality gap captures closed uh, at the point of care rather than through a retro perspective. All right, well, if anyone does have any other questions, um, feel free to go ahead and pop those into the Q&A here. Um, as long as you haven't submit your question anonymously, I'll make sure I can forward it over to our, our panelists so that way they can reach out to you and answer um, any other question that you, you might have. But I do wanna give a, a big thank you to our speakers today, as well as um, Cyox for helping us facilitate this webinar. So thank you guys again. Um, thank you all for attending today's webinar. I am going to launch the experience survey here in a second. I promise, quick survey. Um, any feedback you're willing to give is always appreciated. So thank you in advance. Um, and I hope you all have a, a great rest of your week, week and weekends if we don't see you in the meantime. Bye, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, guys.